come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. It is run by Kate, come and be her guest at the junction. And that Uncle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. for you. Turn around and close your eyes. Oh, Sam, I don't have any time to play now games. Now, do like I say, Kate. Just turn around and close your eyes. <laughs> okay, you can open them now. For me? <laughs> well, no, not for you personally, but for your use here in the store. I'm going to see how it works out. If it does, I'll buy another one in a couple of months. What for? To make your shopping easier. Well, it was easy the other way. I used to read you what's on my list. You would get it for me, and that was that. Hey, this is modern merchandise. <laughs> oh. Well, let's try it and see what happens. <laughs> there we go. Feels nice. Sam, where's the bread? Used to be right here by the door. This is all a part of modern merchandising. I put the bread over there, so on the way over, you might buy a jar of peanut butter that you see, or a bottle of brewing, or a tin of saddle soap. I'm sure. I might buy a case of saddle soap on my way over to get a loaf of bread. And now you're catching on. Go ahead and try it. Being as you're my favorite customer, I'm letting you use it first. Hmm. Maybe we ought to have a ribbon cutting ceremony. <laughs> Works beautifully, doesn't it? Beautiful. Oh, I just remembered something. A letter came for you this morning. Here we are. You might as well take it now instead of waiting for Floyd. Sam, you should have let me go over and get the letter. On the way, I might have picked up a tin of sardines. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, CLFW Railroad. Hmm. Wonder what they want. Haven't heard from them in a long time. I thought by now they'd completely forgotten about the cannonball. Oh, not our good friend Homer Bedlow. My dear Mrs. Bradley, please reserve my favorite room for me at the Shady Rest. I will be the guest of you good people within the next couple of days. Kindest regards, Homer Bedlow. You good people, kindest regards. He sure spreads it on. <laughs> You know, it's amazing the letter didn't stick to the envelope. <laughs> I wonder what he's up to. Oh, nothing good. The sweeter the letter, the more sour his visit. Well, I better get a move on if I'm going to have a guest. <laughs> oh, Sam. Oh, Sam, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay, Kate. This was your trial run. <laughs> Oh, Uncle Joe, did you get the window shade fixed in Mr. Bedlow's room? Yeah, I got it fixed. That's good. During his last visit, that's all we kept hearing about. The window shade that wouldn't stay down. Plus a couple of dozen other complaints. That guy gripes when he talks in his sleep. Where are you going to move? I'm putting these in Mr. Bedlow's room. This is getting sickening, the way you cater to that Jasper. Mom doesn't want to have any problems. She's going all out to make his visit as pleasant as possible. That's why she wants his room to be just right. <laughs> well, a little sunshine will do that bird a world of good. Cannonball! Come on, Uncle Joe, 
Oh, let's go out and greet Mr. Bedlow. Greet Bedlow? Kate, that's the funniest thing you've said all morning. <laughs> Uncle Joe, we're going to treat him nice if it kills us. What a horrible way to go, being nice to Bedlow. <laughs> What's Bedlow coming here for anyhow? I'd like to think it was for rest and relaxation, I'd like to think. <laughs> here it comes. Did you ever see anything so pitiful the way that flight cowtows to Bedlow? Carrying his luggage. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, welcome to the Shady Rest. Nice to see you, Mrs. Bradley. And you too, Mr. Carson. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my good man. Thank you, sir. I'll take over from here, in spite of my bad double detached disc. It's wonderful to be back in this beautiful little valley. Oh, thank you. Uncle Joe will show you to your room, number five. My favorite room. Your hospitality overwhelms me, Mrs. Bradley. Ah, yes. Boys. Huh? What's he doing here? Did he say anything on the trip down? Yeah, he really opened up. He did? Yeah, he said I did a real nice job of engineering. You mean he was actually complimentary? I had to look at the name on his suitcase to be sure it's Bedlow. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a few pieces missing out of this puzzle, but I'll find out what they are. <laughs> well, Mr. Bedlow, I understand you had a nice trip down on the cannonball. Perfect, perfect. Uh, I was afraid with Floyd running the train alone that you might find fault with the service. Heaven for fair. No, that, that smooth fellow does an excellent job. As a matter of fact, I'm here to, uh, to aid and protect him. You're here to aid and protect Floyd? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, the cannonball has a very important assignment. It's transporting a valuable racehorse between Hooterville and Pixley. And I want to be on hand to see that there are no slip-ups. Why would anyone want to transport a valuable racehorse between Hooterville and Pixley? How's that? Why would anyone want to transport a valuable racehorse between Woodville and Pixley? Mm. Well, we in the railroad business do our job. We don't ask questions. But I will... That's the business. But these are happy times. Mrs. Bradley, I understand that your daughter got married recently, and I've, I've brought a wedding present for her. Why, Mr. Bedlow... No, don't get all choked up. It's for her, not you. <laughs> well, let me thank you on her behalf. Yes? Nice suitcase. <laughs> Beautiful leather. It has your name engraved on it. Oh, Bedlow. What you expect? Twiggy? Well, yes. I... No! <laughs> well, this is really something. For one thing, how did he know Betty Joe got married? I'll tell you how I knew. I took it on myself to send him a wedding announcement. You did? When my niece gets married, she gets presents from everybody, friend and foe alike. <laughs> uh, you know, we could be all wrong about Mr. Bedlow. I didn't get him wrong. He still didn't tip me. Well, why should he? You didn't carry your suitcase upstairs. Pick, pick, pick. <laughs> I was just looking at your little home. Every time I see it, it gets to be more of a dollhouse. And the best part of a dollhouse is the little doll living inside. Uh, Boy, you don't know what it is to have my luscious little bride waiting for me after a hard day's work. Well, that's the way it should be. Honey, I'm home. With company. Hi, Ma. Here. Here is my luscious little bride, a vision of loveliness. The sink got clogged up. I was just in the middle of fixing it. Besides, you don't care how I look to you, Mom. Oh, no. I got used to you the first time you came in for making mud pies. Oh. Honey, fixing clogged up sinks is a man's job. Now, I can take care of those things when I get home. When you get home, I'm not playing second fiddle to a clogged up sink. You're spending your time with me, not the plumbing. Right, Mom? Oh, whatever you say is fine, dear. And whatever you say is fine, too, dear. <laughs> Cover girl for Mechanics Monthly. <laughs> Look, kids, I brought you a wedding present, and you'll never guess who it's from. Well, we can't get...
that's where half our presents come from. We got an egg timer from a Mr. Figwood who drives the bus between Granite City and Luke's Landing. And we've never even heard of Mr. Figwood. Yeah, we never even heard of Granite City or Luke's Landing. <laughs> Uncle Joe. Huh? Well, sure, he went to Granite City for that large convention. You mean Uncle Joe was on the bus at Figwood? Was... Yes, and he makes friends easily. No friend, foe, or casual acquaintance went untouched when it came to getting wedding presents for you kids. Former Bedlow. Uh-huh. That kind of threw us, too. He delivered it personally. It's a candy dish. Hey, good. In a couple of months, it'll match those green mints you bought. That wasn't very nice. Well, I guess it wasn't. But just that I understand that Bebo raced right behind Caterpillars in the popularity pool in the valley. <laughs> For a couple of years, he beat him out. <laughs> but now, at the last count, he's right up there with apis and potato bugs. <laughs> I can't get a thing on Bedlow, and it's driving me bats. I know. This waiting game isn't doing me any good, either. Lois, there's a new guest arriving. And what a guest. He's handsome. And tall. And wealthy. And there needs to be more. <laughs> oh, but you made such a complete survey, I wouldn't want you to leave out a little detail like his blood count. <laughs> wealthy, I better check him out. <laughs> Lloyd told us all about him as we were riding back from town. Mm -hmm. He's a racehorse owner. Oh, that must be the man that Bedlow mentioned. But it still doesn't seem to add up. How many people go around giving their horses train rides from Hooterville to Pixley? <laughs> I don't care how many do. Just as long as they're tall, handsome, and wealthy. <laughs> that must be him now. <laughs> don't overdo it. <laughs> Pete, here's a new guest for you, Mr. Rogers. Welcome to the Shady Rest. Thank you. I know you'll enjoy your stay here. Well, I'm sure I will. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> here you are. Thank you, sir. I'll take over. Here. The hard part. Up the stairs. <laughs> Room six, Uncle Joe. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Rogers, these are uh, my two daughters. Uh, Billy Joe and Bobby Joe. Hi, hi. They were very excited when they found out that you were a racehorse owner. Oh, you mean King's Ransom? Yes, he's quite a horse. I want to be on hand when I have him shipped to Pixley tomorrow. Pixley? Is there a horse show there? No, but this is en route to Riverdale, where they are holding the county fair, and I'm going to race him over there. Of course. Thoroughbreds are high-strung and sensitive and have to be pampered like beautiful women. I think you'll be very comfortable, Mr. Rogers. I'm sure I will. Thoroughbreds are high strung and sensitive and have to be pampered like beautiful women. Yeah. It took all my self control to keep from rearing up and winning. <laughs> You know I was here, Mr. Bedlow. Oh, good boy. Now, don't worry. I'll take care of you when we get back to the office. Meanwhile... Sam, this Bedlow matter has me worried. He and this Rogers fellow are in cahoots. Rogers? Yeah, he's the one that owns that valuable thoroughbred horse. Did you say valuable thoroughbred horse? Well, that's what he and Mr. Bedlow call it. Kate, that valuable horse just arrived today, and Lem Stacy is keeping it in his stable. <laughs> now, what do you think of your valuable thoroughbred, Kate? Well... The last time I saw a horse like that, there were two fellas inside. <laughs> Wonder what Bedlow's trying to pull off. All set, Lloyd. You wait in a second, Kate. I'll get this just right. Oh, sure. Go right ahead. How many oughts in 10,000? Four. No fooling. 
Boy, that's about the biggest number I ever printed. And when you put the dollar mark in front of it, looks real important. Ten thousand dollars? Yeah, uh, that's what Mr. Rogers is insuring his horse for when I haul it from Hooterville to Pixley tomorrow. He's insuring that broken down nag for ten thousand dollars? Yeah, that's why I gotta take such good care of that horse. Maybe I ought to let him ride up in the cab with me. Ten thousand dollars? Yeah, that's the limit, Kate. See? It says so right here in the freight manual. That's what it says, all right, but why? Wait a minute. Any freight transported in excess of $1,000 in value must have a certified baggage man accompanying shipment at all times. Well, uh, no problem there. I'm a certified baggage man. Yeah, but with Charlie gone, you're the engineer. I'm also a baggage man. Floyd, this means that a shipment of this value must be attended by a baggage man. In other words, the baggage man must be in the car while the horse is being transported. That would keep me kind of busy, running the train and being in the baggage car at the same time. <laughs> well, that explains the reason for Mr. Homer Bedlow's visit. Being aware that the cannonball is a one-man operation, he's going to use this technicality to shut it down for good. Hey, he can't do that. we we got to keep the cannonball running. Well, I'm just as concerned about this as you are. But you are the only baggage man. And you are the only one in the valley who can operate the train. Outside of Betty Jo. Well, sure, but she's a little housewife now. <laughs> Believe me, Mom. I'd do it if it weren't for Steve. Well, then you forget I even asked. I wouldn't want you to do anything that would interfere with your marriage. But why would Steve object? <laughs> well, after you left the other day, we got into a big thing about... My fixing the sink and doing repairs. He said after work he wants to come home to a very feminine wife dressed in her prettiest house dress. Well, you can't blame him for that. Well, he said hugging me with a monkey wrench in my pocket didn't bring out my femininity and soften me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, running a train isn't exactly chic this season. <laughs> there must be someone else around at the run the cannibal. Well, how about Uncle Joe? Well, he thought he could until the day he came to the end of the line, he couldn't stop and wound up in the Pixley Depot. <laughs> I remember. Betty Jo! Hey! Hey! Oh, Betty Jo! Sam! I've been trying to chase you down all over the valley. Take it easy, Sam. Sit down. Here, have a drink. Oh, thank you. Who's running the store? I closed her up. This is an emergency. No hmm. matter what I tell you comes to pass, it's going to stay closed up, and that's going to include your hotel. Now, now Sam, Sam, uh, put yourself together. Well, Fredlow came into my store and used the phone. He must have thought that I was in the back room, but I was right there all the time, hearing everything. I was stacking some honeydew melons, and he didn't even notice me. <laughs> but that's understandable. <laughs> yeah. Well heard him talking to his company lawyer, and he told him to start preparing the papers to close down the cannonball. He wants to handle everything while he's right here. Oh, no. Well, he must be pretty sure he's got a surefire case. Oh, I heard him say it'd hold up in any court in the land. I was afraid of this. Mom, I'll run the cannonball tomorrow. Well, now, hold it. What about Steve? Well, I'll try to work it so he won't find out. I understand Floyd is going to pick up the horse in Hooterville at 3 o'clock. Perfect. I can get back in time for dinner. Yeah. And I'll tell you what I'll do. While you're engineering, I'm going to cook Steve a dinner that's going to knock his eye out. Oh, Mom, don't make it too good. I want him to think I did it. <laughs> I thought it was awfully quiet around here. Where do you think they went? Probably out planning a counterattack, but this time I've got him. I was unbeatable from the top. Well-planned gift, a few tips, the old charm. Bedlow, you're beautiful. <laughs> Where do you plan to intercept the train? Right here, at the Shady Rest stop. When I go aboard and there's no baggage man watching that horse, that'll be it. Now the man, the operation of the cannonball, be suspended immediately. And this bone in my throat will be gone once and for all. You'll be my witness. 
And I'll see to it that you have a substantial raise. Thank you. Well, we have a little while yet. Why don't you join me inside at the piano? We'll sing a few choruses of the Cannonball Blues. <laughs> you know, Ray, you're going to get along all right in this business. You're a little on the nice-looking side, but, well, no, we can't have everything, can we? <laughs> Well, right on schedule, like a good engineer. Floyd should be loading me old hay burner right about now. Oh, Ma, thanks for coming by and giving me a hand with dinner. Anything for the cause. Uh, burn something, just to throw him off. <laughs> <laughs> Did you figure out a menu? Well, I decided on pot roast. I thought it would be a good idea to hit him with his favorite meal. Oh, honey, you haven't made up yet? Well, not exactly. Last night, I forgot myself and fixed the water heater. Well, look, if, if this thing I thought would cause any trouble... Oh, Mom, everything's fine. Besides, we make up so beautifully. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bye, dear. And drive carefully. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi, Mrs. Bradley. Guess <laughs> what? <Hi. laughs> I am taking the afternoon off. You are? Yep. And you and I are going to make up. Yeah. You know how? You're going to put on your prettiest dress, and we're going to fly up to Riverdale. And we're going to have dinner at our favorite restaurant, the one with the little brook running through it. Yeah. And everybody in the place is going to say, look at that lucky guy with that gorgeous hunk of femininity. Right, Mrs. Bradley? All oh, right. Right. That's my pretty Jill. Hey, well, uh, what's with the hat? Then? A hat? Oh, oh, this. Oh, well, uh... I just got it out because Mom and I were gabbing about bygone days when I used to play shortstop with a Hooterville hawk. <laughs> right, Mom? Right. You know, woman talk. <laughs> <laughs> now, you go put on your prettiest dress, and I'll go shave and shower. Mm. Oh, it's nice to have a wife again instead of a plumber's helper. <laughs> What am I going to do? I know what you're going to do. You're not going to run the cannonball. <laughs> I'll think of something if I have to run it myself. Homer Bedlow's messed up a lot of things, but he's not going to mess up my daughter's marriage. So, at this point, we're faced with a cannonball without an engineer. Well, I guess it's my duty to step forth and save the day. I'll run the cannonball. Oh, no, you don't. The last time you engineered the cannonball, remember what happened? When you came to the end of the line at Fixley? <laughs> nag, nag, nag. I only missed it by ten feet. <laughs> don't look at me. I have trouble operating a coffee grinder at my store. Well, it finally looks like Bedlow did it to us. Uncle Joe, do you really want to help out? Kate, I'd do anything to save the cannonball. Remember, boys, I have you as witnesses. Now. Just as I suspected, he's waiting there. Mrs. Bradley, Mr. Smoot, as an official of the CNFW, I'm making a routine inspection of the cannonball, starting first with the baggage car. Yes, sir. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Just as I suspected, no baggage man in attendance. In attendance of what? That valuable animal in your transporting. What valuable animal? A racehorse. It... Okay, everybody out of my way. Oh, is that what you had in mind? Saturday on TV Land. 
is your rare chance to see big Hollywood legends explore the medium of television. Our stars this week are Kim Basinger, Julie Andrews, and Rock Hudson on Big Stars Little Screen, our Saturday cavalcade.